This is Twit. All right. So you may have heard that uh, GPT, OpenAI's uh, large language model, has gotten an update. And with that has come a whole host of uh, interesting changes. And I think a lot of folks who are excited about what's next uh, for GPT. Joining us today to talk about what's going on with GPT is Semaphore's own J.D. Capilouto. Welcome to the show, J.D. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a pleasure to get you on. So let's, uh, of course, start with the basics because we do get new listeners to the show. We do get listeners who may not be super steeped in tech like we are. Um, Tell us about OpenAI's GPT technology. Just in general, what is OpenAI's GPT before we even start getting into those numbers of three and four? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, essentially, it, it can get confusing. So for, for those who aren't super familiar, it's essentially OpenAI's large language learning model that powers what we know, what many people know of as ChatGPT, which is their chatbot. It essentially is trained on over 100 billion pieces of tech data from across, or text data, excuse me, I'm in a, I'm in a tech headspace here, <laughs> text data from across the internet, and essentially uses that to when you ask it a question to predict the next word that comes next. So it essentially just guesses what it thinks is the most likely word to complete a phrase or a sentence. And it essentially has been evolved over time, over the years uh, to power, like I said, what we know of as chat GPT, which is how it gets its name. So it's very smart autocorrect. Essentially, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I guessing, you know, in your predictive text on your phone, when you're guessing what the next word would be, it's a much better version of that because that one isn't super good. Not great. Right. <laughs> um, well, so one of the things that I think is important to understand, and I've seen some confusion here, is a lot of times chat GPT and then GPT-3, which up to this point has been the the sort of system behind it, those get uh, conflated. And so I was hoping that you could explain the difference uh, when we're talking about chat GPT and we're just talking about GPT itself. What's the difference there? Right. So the way that I like to think about it is that chat GPT is the chatbot that we know where you can go in and ask it questions and it'll respond. Um, GPT is kind of the underlying technology that powers that. So GP, chat GPT uses what's called actually GPT 3.5 to make things even more confusing with more numbers. <laughs> it's essentially built on top of GPT 3 and is a, a fine-tuned version of that. But essentially the tech itself is GPT and then the chat bot that we all know and love is chat GPT. And it uses, like I said, 3.5. And now we have four. So it kind of continues that evolution. Got it. Um, so moving on to the update, we uh, mm-hmm. saw OpenAI announce GPT-4 and start to kind of show that off. Could you tell us about the difference between GPT-3 and GPT-4? And then we'll dig into some of the details of the two. Yeah, so it essentially does what ChatGPT does, but a lot better in terms of its language skills and its cognitive reasoning. Uh, It can analyze way more text and kind of synthesize it down to kind of whatever you want it to be. So I think it can take up to 25,000 words of text and and kind of as input. Um, It's much better. We've seen at things like math and at cognitive reasoning. Sometimes you would give the current chat GPT, you would give it like a logic puzzle or something that requires like a slightly higher level of thinking and it just wouldn't be able to get there. GPT-4 is is, is there in terms of uh, its cognitive skills. Um, and one thing that it has that ChatGPT doesn't have is that it can take t- uh, images as input. Um, you can send it a photo apparently, and it'll be able to describe it and analyze what's in it. That hasn't been publicly released yet, apparently because of fears of it being abused, which kind of speaks to this broader question of, of responsible AI. But that is something that we've seen a bit in the demos um, that apparently GPT-4 can do, which is a really huge advancement in terms of understanding the, the kind of bringing in the visual aspect of it as well. Yeah. And you, you take, you talked about, you know, sort of the, the concerns there, they, mm-hmm. the open AI has talked about how GPT four is quote unquote safer. And mm-hmm. that kind of is a broad term that has many different underlying pieces. Can yeah. you t- tell us about what's going on there? Mm-hmm. What I think they mean by that is that they say that GPT four is 82% less likely to produce a response to something uh, where the content is not allowed. Um, So they have some things like if we've seen with ChatGBT, if people ask it like information on like how to commit a crime or like tell an offensive joke or something, it'll it'll be like, no, you know, that's not right. I'm I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, We've seen some people be able to kind of jailbreak it is what they call it and go around it. 
which I don't know why people are like going out of their way to try to, to tell offensive <laughs> jokes, but it does test the limits of this kind of thing. And in, 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 so in that way, I guess it can be helpful. But um, apparently GPT-4 is more trained to kind of not reveal a, as many of those pieces of content that aren't allowed, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So it, where before you could more than likely uh, get it to do something that it's not supposed to be doing, now it becomes right. more difficult. It's going to be more convoluted process if you are that, going to get it to do something. Yeah, yeah that's what it seems like. I've, I've been kind of trolling the chat GBT Reddit, um, kind of scrolling through it. I, kind of where a lot of people test out different things and already seeing people say that GPT-4 is a little more restrictive, they say, um, which again, can be a good thing if, if you're trying to avoid harmful content. Um, but that seems to be what, what OpenAI means by that. Got it. Now, one of the terms you use in the piece, and uh, it's one of, I find, the most fascinating things about these chat bots or this uh, large language model technology, um, it's hallucinations. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us in terms of AI, what does it mean when an AI is hallucinating? Yeah. So it's essentially, if you think of what we as humans think of as hallucination, hallucinating, when you see something and you think you see it and you're sure it's there, but it's actually not there. It's the same for an AI where it so confidently believes that something is correct and is just wrong about it and, and really believes that, that, it, that it's right, even though it's wrong, mm -hmm. um, and that it's not backed up really by its training data, and it can be really confusing. And those are some of the viral examples that went around with ChatGPT of like, oh my God, it believes you know X Y Z. What this makes no sense. They say that um, GPT four has less of those and um, sh could should be a little more accurate, um, but uh, they still say that it has some problems with hallucinations that they're working to figure out. So those are some of the limits that are going to continue to be tested over these next few weeks, I believe. Got it. Now. One of the things that uh, OpenAI showed off were some different examples of how uh, GPT-4 works in terms of uh, in, in comparison to GPT-3. Uh, so I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about some of the examples that they showed in the event and then also talk about um, its improved performance on standardized exams, because that was another big factor. Yeah. It seems to be that it's um, a little more creative than it was before. But uh, yeah, tell us all about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in terms of the examples, one thing it showed off kind of how it can distill a lot of complicated information. Um, this was, an, uh, I should mention, a demonstration that uh, OpenAI president and co-founder Greg Brockman did after it was after GPT-4 was released, and it was mostly for developers. I'm not a developer, but I still found it super interesting just as a journalist and a user. He showed how it can distill a lot of complicated information and kind of analyze that. He copied, I believe, 26 pages of the U.S. tax code into GPT-4 and asked it a very complicated tax question that I definitely wouldn't have been able to answer on my own. Uh, and it pretty much immediately spit out the answer. So that was one example on, on the text, text side of things. Then he showed off the image capabilities, which again, isn't in any of OpenAI's GPT models up until now. He sent it a photo of uh, a screenshot of a Discord chat that, that they were using during the demo. And it and he asked it to describe in painstaking detail what it was describing. He didn't even say whether it was a screenshot or what, but it noticed that it was and it perfectly described what was in this screenshot. Wow. And then what was the coolest example? Yeah, it was when he basically during live during the demo took a photo of a scribble, uh, like a mock-up of a website that he wanted to make, um, just that it was on a notepad. He sent it a photo and it was like in his handwriting and um, you know, just kind of drawn out really quickly, it looked like. And he basically asked it, make a website of, of this mock-up using uh, JavaScript and HTML. And it immediately <laughs> oh, wow. output this website, which um, you know, was way beyond I think my my capabilities at least it was it was relatively simple but it involved a button that you had to click and it just immediately understood it and again this was a demo so who knows if they tested to make sure that it would be good ahead of time but it was still really really cool to instantly see like a little scribble on a piece of paper drawn out um it, or just created into a website yeah and, and that's really impressive that's yeah, that's <laughs> incredibly impressive and uh, what i think there is especially impressive is like all of the different contexts that you're talking about because right. you've got um and, and even I remember uh, reading about in that Discord chat, there was a photo and it was a photo of a squirrel like holding a yes. uh, camera. And mm -hmm. so not only did uh, ChatGPT explain in, in painstaking detail or not ChatGPT, but GPT-4 explain in mm -hmm. painstaking detail what the photo was in general, but then to go on and say, 
and why is that photo that's in this screenshot so or what what's funny about this photo and it was able to provide the context there which we all know the way that you make a joke even funnier is by explaining it but um even though it may not have a sense of humor i still find that incredibly impressive yeah no and in terms of understanding like the cognitive reasoning around like why it was humorous for a squirrel to be taking a photo of a nut that it had found like that is something that ChatGPT never would be able to do in its current form. So it was really, really cool to, to see that. And I've seen in terms of the coding ability, um, that is something that I, I should have mentioned earlier that is much more sophisticated on GPT-4. People I've already seen on Twitter being able to make like snake games to play on their computer or like a little game of like electronic pong, just immediately being able to turn it around with GPT-4. So that's been really, really cool. Um, but on the standardized test angle, um, one thing that was kind of went viral with ChatGPT after it was released was people kind of putting it to the test of like, oh, I made ChatGPT take a, a Wharton exam or I made it take the bar and see how it did. This time around, OpenAI put GPT-4 to the test before it was released and kind of detailed all of those results in its report, um, which was really interesting compared to how ChatGPT would do. And it did much better on, on the bar. Uh, it was scored in the 90th percentile of the bar compared to chat GPT, which was in the 10th percentile did much better on wow. calculus. It got a four on the AP calculus BC exam compared to the one that chat GPT got. Um, one thing where it didn't do as well though, which is really important to still know was, was writing in English. It, it got a two on, on the AP English and language literature and composition exams. Hmm. Um, and which, which was the same as what chat GPT got. So, um, obviously that requires a little more original thinking and writing. So, that's kind of an important limitation to note when it comes to these large language AI models that are essentially scraping existing text that's on the internet and, and kind of repurposing them. Wow. That's, that's fascinating though, to see mm -hmm. it, um, do as well as it did on some of those yeah. exams. Um, and even there was what the leet code, is that what it's called? The leet the code? Lead code exam? Yes. It, yeah. The leet code exam is essentially something, a, a course and test that coders can take to like test their skills and they have different versions of it. ChatGPT uh, did pretty poorly, especially on the uh, advanced version. Uh, GPT-4 did better on the easy version. It got like a 31 out of 41, out of a possible 41. But in terms of the advanced one, which apparently requires a little bit more original thinking and a little more being more abstract, it got like a 3 out of 45 or something like that. So it still did very poorly on the advanced coding. Um, so obviously room for improvement there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, now, will folks be able to use GPT-4 by way of chat GPT or is the service still using and will continue to just use uh, GPT 3.5 as you, as you point out, will we all eventually get access to GPT four or is this only going to be an API accessible technology? Yeah. So right now anyone can get access to GPT four if they're a paid subscriber of what's called chat GPT plus, which costs $20 a month. And it essentially will provide you with access to GPT four in the similar chatbot context. Um, so essentially, yes. But uh, so but right now, if you're not a paid subscriber, you only still get the regular chat GPT. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Certifications show more than proving a skill set. They let everyone see you are committed to keeping your knowledge and skills up to date. The products you've grown to love, IT Pro, Audit Pro, and Practice Labs are now training the modern workforce together. Be bold. Train smart. Check out go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more. <laughs> 